going to show you how I'm going to cut this piece here with an example piece. So, put the piece here, um, and I line it up on both sides. So, on this pole and the other pole. So, I take my pencil and I just mark right next to it. Because you got to think about how it goes in. It's going to go in on this side. So, when I flip this over, I want this side cut out like that. So I want, at the end of the day, I want something like that cut out. So when I flip it, it needs to be the opposite. So I line it up like that, and I mark both sides. So next you gotta take your measurement to how big of a notch you need. Now what you gotta do is you gotta know how big your gaps are. Now these gaps are eighth of an inch. I just measure over here and say, oh, it's an eighth of an inch. So I butt into this guy, and I measure over, and it's three and five eighths. And so that's how big I want to cut minus one eighth, which is three and a half. I describe it at three and a half, and I just go like this. I got, I get my mark there. Now I know. And then I take my speed square and I mark these ones. Now this is kind of bumpy, as you can see. It's not flat, so it's super hard to use the square because the square doesn't sit flat, there's these voids and your pencil can turn. So when I, for sure, whenever I use something like this, when I go to cut it, I like to use my speed square as a guide. So I line up the blade on the line, and then I hold the speed square. See now I like cutting upside down because I can do a nice overcut, and then on the back side it's good. So I set my depth to the saw exactly to this width. So I know that the, underneath this bolt is where the cut ends. So what I do is I still hold back about a half inch or so from the, where I want to end the cut from this bolt. So I see my end line down there. You guys probably can't see it. And I line up the, the bolt to that. So you can see my, my cut. Now I like to take my knife. If you got a sharp blade, this is super easy. You just cut out these corners a little bit. Get them nice and crisp. Right, now let's see how we did on the fitting. It looks pretty good. It got a little big. Oh, it's definitely got some play. That might be too big. I might want to redo that one. Um, but. If you split the gaps all the way around on something, then it doesn't look too bad because there's going to be a gap over here as well. So if you put it like that, then you got nice gaps and it actually doesn't look too bad. And that's okay if it doesn't fit quite right. Usually on cuts like this, I'd say about half the time, I got to do them again. It's the way it works. Now, you'd rather err on the small side so you can just cut it a little bigger and then you're back in business. Most of the time, it's gonna take one or two, maybe, especially if you're starting out, many iterations to get these cuts right. These are the tough ones. So I hope you learned something, I hope that's helpful, um, and have a good day.